Hello, makers. Welcome to Always Yarn First, a podcast about knitting, crochet, spinning, and all the other yarny goodness in between. I'm Lindsay, and I'm coming to you from Little Rock, Arkansas. You can also find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Always Yarn First. Um, welcome. Today is Sunday, April 30th. I'm sorry I'm finishing a cough drop in my mouth because I have been coughing a lot this morning. So, um, let's see. If you're new here, welcome. I'm a bit of a chaotic mess today. It's been um, a crazy couple of weeks since I last podcasted. So, um, before we get into it, I'd like to mention the make-alongs I have running. I have two currently. One is hashtag nothing but double. I'm running with my friend Lori from Arkansas Yarn Co. And we are making blankets with yarn held double. Those are the only two requirements. Um, you can use the hashtag on Instagram or you can post your finished objects on Arkansas Yarn Co.'s uh, Ravelry group page. I am also running a make along currently from April through June. Um, hashtag it's Marling Darling. And the difference between Marling and holding yarn double is it has to be two different yarns. It can be the same yarn with two different colors held double or two different kind of yarn, like a mohair and a fingering held double. Um, so that is for any project. It can be for uh, whips that you already have on the needles and you just use the hashtag or you can post your finished objects um, on my um, Ravelry group page. So <clears throat> if you are new here, I name every episode by a song title that currently describes uh, my mood or my makes. And because I am a huge music lover, almost all kinds of music. And this week's episode is called You Dropped a Bomb on Me. Um, that is a song by the Gap Band. And um, I will describe why that is in a second here. But I do have a playlist for every song I've used for every episode title on Spotify, which you will find the link that, to that below, as long with other links below for what I talk about in the episode. I will also have chapters below um, of what I'm talking about when, so you can skip around if you like. Um, so today, I'm going to talk a little bit of life chatter up front. I usually don't do that, but I feel like I need to explain the song title and the last two weeks um, to explain both my making the last two weeks and my acquisitions the last two weeks. So, um, and then I have a finished object, a couple of whips, and a lot of acquisitions to show. So, let's get into it. Uh, so, first of all, the last two weeks, the last time I podcasted, um, usually I record on Saturdays. And I recorded Saturday and then Sunday night I'm, I had a sore throat and didn't feel great. And I thought, oh, I feel like I'm getting sick. Both my husband and I said so. And then Monday morning I woke up and was sick. Um, I ended up just having a really bad cold. I tested negative for COVID. I never had a fever with it. Just like violent sneezing. The first day and then like violent coughing, um, lots of blowing my nose and just for like at least three days, I had no energy at all. Um, so my making was, I think I worked on one project which you'll see a lot of progress on since the last podcast, but that was it. Um, that was all I could wrap my mind around. And then to make matters worse, um, we were supposed to be leaving for Iowa. Um, if you, again, if you've been here a while, you know that my grandma has dementia and sh I have been visiting her every other month. I make the trip up there cause it's about 10 and a half hour drive, um, up there. So every other month I usually go and I spend a week up there, um, to sit with her and give my parents a little break cause it's a lot uh, for them. So I had my planned trip and I was sick and then my daughter got sick a few days after I got sick. And so it was like, are we going to go up there? Anyways, we went 
<laughs> um, and I stayed with my grandma. And then a few days into staying with my grandma, she fell. And that was kind of always, you know, like worst nightmare, her falling and not recovering. So she fell when I was at her apartment. She lives on her own. And she fractured her pelvic bone. So wasn't good. Uh, trip to the emergency room. And I, you know, she lives in a little town that I grew up in. So we actually had to go to the next town over. Um, long story short, very frustrating week, shortened up, is she was in the hospital pretty much the rest of the week while I was there. And then now she has transferred into a home where she'll be doing rehab for like a month. Um, so we'll see from there. So it was a very stressful week. Um, so again, my making was very slim. So what that means for the title of the song I'm using today, you dropped a bomb on me, uh, wasn't planning on getting sick, had to deal with that. Wasn't planning on my grandma falling, had to deal with that. You know, life happens and you continue on. So, um, so what that means for today's episode, there's not a lot of making to show. And on the flip side of that, there's a lot of purchases to show because I feel it's almost like food in a way. Sometimes shopping is like you stress shop and I feel like that's what's happened here. Um, <clears throat> and travel shopping because... I had already planned on making a trip to a yarn shop on the way up to Iowa um, called Unraveled, and I will be having a video to highlight Petra and her store Unraveled um, separately. And then, so I made purchases there. I went to the alpaca farm that's outside of my hometown and made purchases there. And then on the way home, I went to Midwest Fiber Festival in St. Louis, Missouri, and I took a class there and then I made purchases there and then I met my friend who we exchanged gifts between us so I have presents also that I received <clears throat> so that is what gonna be this episode very few making a lot of things and you can tell I still kind of have my cough so I'm sorry about that I didn't get much sleep last night so my hair and just I just feel all over the place and again sorry about that but I'm just trying to be here, get this podcast out, get y'all caught up, and um, hopefully start feeling better and getting back into a swing of things. And uh, I really want to start spinning because you'll see a purchase I got that I need to work on immediately. So let's get into the making first. I have one finished object. That finished object has to do with the class I took. Um, like I said, today's Sunday. So Friday on the way home, um, I stopped in St. Louis. I um, knew I was going to be going through St. Louis when there was a little fiber festival going on. So I happened to look at the classes and decided to sign up for a class. I signed up for, I'll put the name of it. It's like creative weaving for the creative spirit or something like that. And I'm like, that sounds, you know, stress-free. Like, that sounds like my jam. So, I have never weaved anything in my life before. So, this was using the Seore um, style, like Japanese weaving, where, like, anything goes, pretty much. <clears throat> so, here is my finished object. Again, it's a bit of a mess because I've never done this before. So I started at the bottom, was kind of figuring out my way. And then they gave us these little baggies. They call them treasures. Um, I call them flare. So like fabric, baubles, anything like extra you see that isn't like, like the yarn or fiber in here was in the, the um, baggies and they wanted us to use at least five. I used more than that, I'm pretty sure. But just like she had bins of all kinds of crazy yarn, you can see, um, where is it? All this fuzzy stuff. 
is like the eyelash yarn that I would never dream of crocheting or knitting with, but it is super fun to weave with. It is super fun. Um, so yeah, this was super fun. And um, the class description had said that you don't need to bring anything. All the materials are included. You go home with your item. But if you wanted to bring something, you could. So I actually brought there's some left. I brought some of my early um, hand spun, you know, that was really thick. And I thought, I'm not going to knit with this. So I had brought this pink. And I had brought a different little skein of this one. And you can see it in there, this pink. And then this blue, green, yellow. And then I used each of them one more time. And I think the hand spun looks awesome in this weaving. It is so fun. Um, I'm not going to buy a giant floor loom. I have no desire to do that. But I had previously, and I think I mentioned on here, I had bought like a table, like little loom to play with um, for the reason of using my hand spun. And um, <clears throat> I think I might get it out again and play with it because I just think this hand spun that's too thick to be used in a knitting project looks amazing in weaving. So yeah, that's it. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's super fun. And it was um, very meditative to do. I love this part. Um, so when you're putting the treasures in or the flare, they said, you know, you can either lay it across like you see right here. I used fabric where I kind of laid it straight. Um, but then there's other ones where I kind of just ruffled it up. And my favorite one is right here. It looks like a little bow. It's just the way it kind of folded over when I did it. But it's so fun. Yeah. So that was a very fun experience. And my friend Christy, um, I told her I was going to go, so she signed up for the class too. So we got to do it together. So it was super fun. I'll actually put in a picture, um, her and me and our project side by side. So you can see how different um, it went. But yeah, it was very relaxing to do. So highly recommend. All right. So that's my only finished object. I have not cast on anything new. So I only have three whips to show you today. Um, let's see. So I will show you the one that I started with that honestly I thought was going to be a finished object um, by the time I podcasted because the week I was sick, I had just cast this on the last podcast. And the week I was sick, this was like all I wanted to work on. So I worked on it a ton. And then I worked on it a ton when I first got to Iowa. And then when my grandma fell, like I was like working flat in different sections and my brain just could not function anymore. Um, not that it was a hard pattern, just like that was just too much. So this is in one of my fringe supply co bags that I got from La Bien Ami online many years ago. It is very dirty and needs washed. All right. So this is the Seven Sisters top. Now, last time, where was I? This uh, goes from the bottom up. And last time, you see where the marker was down there. I had just cast it on. Literally the bottom of this sweater. I had just cast it on. So you'll see I made a ton of progress. I essentially did the whole body. It's kind of hard to show this because of what I all got going on. This is one of those patterns like where it said like, so you'll see this part is down lower. So it was like you work in the round and then you're supposed to, it says to put this on waist yarn or whatever. I just keep it on here and don't work it. So then I worked this further and then you work one side further and you work the other side further. And so then it has me put the middle stitches um, to go into the neck band on hold. 
So you can see why I was just, again, not hard instructions, very easy pattern to follow. But once my grandma fell and I was worried and I didn't know what was going to happen, I just could not focus anymore on this. But I am loving this yarn. I'm loving the texture. Um, this is Queensland Coastal Cotton in the colorway Bridgewater Bay. And I bought this from Arkansas Yarn Co. And I love the feel of it. A lot of people have said that when they work with cotton, um, their hands don't like it. I have, and I have had that too with certain cottons. This I have had no problem with. It has been a joy to knit. Like I said, when I picked it up, I could not put it down and did not want to work on anything. I was really, if it wasn't been for that accident, I'm pretty sure I would have come home with this as a finished object and I'd be wearing it right now. Oh, which I forgot about what I was wearing. This is the May sweater by um, Andrea Mowry. And I'll have my Ravelry link below if you want details on this one. Like I said, I'm all over the place today. So yeah, this is where I'm at. Again, I'm hoping that now that I'm home, once I start feeling better, <coughs> excuse me, I will get, <coughs> pardon, I will get my mind right and I will finish this because I love it. So that is the project with the most progress um, for the last two weeks. So there's two other things I did work on a bit. So the other one is in my other French Supply Co. bag. Um, but I got this one. <sighs> I got it in Nashville quite a few years ago. Um, this is my outline tank. The Jesse made designs. And still doesn't look like much. You can see I did add some on it though. Um, I'm still just, I am not doing it cropped, so I'm adding a lot more length to it than it calls for. But again, doesn't, you know, not much to look at, nothing fancy, just knitting. So, but I am making progress. This was on my goals, uh, for April, obviously not. Um, yeah, I have failed for my April goals, which is okay. Sometimes uh, life gets in the way and you just roll with it. So yeah, that is my outline tank. I just need to get that done for the uh, Arkansas Yarn Crawl in July because that is the um, top everybody is doing. And then we'll take pictures with everybody that made the same top. All right. The other thing I worked on is in one of my Mrs. Brown's bags. Again, this bag is from many, many years ago, but I will link her shop. And this is my Eyelet Burst Shawl by Stephen West. I finally finished color one. <clears throat> so you can see my marker. I have it way over on the side, so I remember when I start that this is the right side row. This is the side that I'm going to be doing the increases. Um, so yeah, I made a good deal of progress. <clears throat> so I did the fade part, which is, um, I did like six rows of that. So I'm back into the second color. Now the first color was this one. This is how much I have left. This is Arkansas yarn co signature plush. Um, and the world is not enough. Now I'm currently working on this one, which is Hugh Loco Merino Sock in the colorway Cat Nanny. So even though it looks like I'm still doing striping, I'm now permanently in the second color. And so I just put color three in my bag, so it's ready. This will be the third color. Um, Semi-tonal again, this is again, Arkansas Yarn Co Signature Plush in Let the Sky Fall colorway. And then there'll be a fourth color that kind of goes into blues and purple tones. So yeah, I'm loving this. Again, this is a very easy, very easy pattern. Um, very mindless. 
I worked on this yesterday. We were traveling home and my husband drove. So this was my car project on the way home. And I literally finished uh, the fade striping right as we were pulling in the driveway. I was on the last row, which was funny. So yeah, it's kind of hard to see and it will get harder to see. Um, my friend Maddie just finished this and she blocked it and it's like, I feel like it was like 72 inches wide or something like that so you're increasing every other row it, six stitches every other row so you can see how many stitches I have now I just started color two there's four colors so this thing is gonna get impossible to see as I show it but it's just kind of a mean it this was like something I didn't need, but I had all of the yarn in my stash and I wanted a super easy, mindless, stress-free project. And that is this. I'm not in a hurry to finish it. Um, there's no like deadline. It's just an enjoyable uh, knit and I love the colors. So that is the other thing. I have technically worked on one more whip, but it is my secret whip that I'm not gonna show. Um, it is my retreat shawl, I'm calling it now. It's for the Arkansas Yarn Co. Uh, weekend with Friends retreat. And it will be a pattern that is included, so I'm not gonna show it, so to keep it a surprise. Um, but that shawl actually, because it is a lot of garter stitch, with a little bit of patterning. Um, it was actually the project I picked up the most after my grandma's accident. Um, for some reason, after my grandma's fall, like I wanted something easy. So I thought, you know, I'll work on that eyelet burst job, but I also wanted something a little bit extra. You know, I don't know if all of you are like that. Like my sweater I had just finished a few podcasts ago. I had that one detail just down the front of the sweater. And that to me is like the perfect knit because you're just knitting for, you know, 80% of the garment, but you had that little bit that your brain's like, okay, I have to do a little bit of work, but it wasn't hard. And that's what my shawl is. Um, and so I actually got a lot done on that this last week, which has been awesome because I've really needed to focus on trying to get that done. Um, so others from the, the shop can do a test knit to see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to show that, but that was a lot of progress. So pretty much my cotton tee and my shawl um, design is what got the most use uh, this last week. So that is all of my whips. Um, spinning, I'm not going to show any. I did do a little bit of spinning um, right after I podcast last, but it's pretty much the same stuff I've been showing, the alpaca I've been showing. I don't know, you can kind of see it's on bobbins up here. Um, but I haven't, I did not take my e-spinner with me. A lot of times I take it, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because with the events of the week, I don't think I would have spun at all. It would have been so sloppy. Uh, so I was glad I didn't bring it, but I am itching to spin because I haven't uh, for over a week now. So let's get into the acquisitions. Uh, this is going to be the meat and potato of the podcast. And so much so where I have it <clears throat> panned out so I can go in order of what I got here. So <clears throat> first of all, the day before I left um for Iowa I got my gritty knits fiber club sorry for the plastic I like to show it out of plastic so every month I get a mystery fiber this is it of course gorgeous hot pinks this is the April gritty knits club and she always um, has some kind of extra. So this week it was a little knit notes, little notebook. So I got that in the mail right before I left. All right. I'm going to take a little sip. I have 
my vitamin water. All right, next. Um, so in order of my trip. Next, I um, went to Unraveled, which is a yarn store in Paragould, Arkansas. I had been there several times before. Uh, this time I did a little interview with Petra and I filmed some video of the store and I am going to make that into a separate video. I'm going to work on that today. So should be up either later today, Sunday, um, April 30th or tomorrow. Um, but of course I had to get something and what I got was um one thing I got was what I've previously got so if you've watched this podcast for a while you will have seen this yarn before I think I got this my last trip to Paragold um this is a stunning like rose gold color and this is Ba Yarn La Jola it's 100% wool and the colorway is called My Chihuahua Bites. I have two skeins of this. I bought two skeins last time. Didn't know what I was going to do. Love the color. But oh, I'll buy two skeins. Well, then I've thought about a few times making like a t-shirt with it. But I didn't have quite enough yarn. This is 400 yards to a skein. I didn't have quite enough. So this time I bought one more skein. And I thought maybe I can make a rocket tee or something similar to that. So this will go with the two I already have. And then since the last time I've been there, um, Petra has gotten in Emma's yarn. And I know I've used Emma's yarn before, but it's been quite a while. And this color just kept calling to me. I don't know if you can see, like, you can see the blue and the white, of course. But there's also some awesome, like, coppery orange bits in there. And this is Emma's Yarn Drapey DK. This is 70% merino, 30% silk. It is so soft and squishy. Uh, this is the colorway Malibu. So oh, you can see the orange over there. So yeah, I got this and I got a couple stickers. Um, so her yarn shop, if you watch the video, is yarn shop slash bookshop. Her husband kind of runs the bookshop side of things. And um, so I got this on the book, the bookshelf side, mom life. Momming ain't easy. You are not lying. And then I got this cute little sticker. Keep calm, carry yarn. So yes, that was my purchased from Unravel. That's where I started my trip. Then my next stop <clears throat> was to see my friend Christy. Um, I knew I was going to see her the following week at class, but she lives in Illinois and that's where we were stopping for the night and staying on our way to break up the trip. And so I went over to her house. I, Christy is so giving she loves giving presents. Um, and thankfully, I brought her a present also. I had spun some yarn previously, and it was purple. And purple is Christy's favorite color. And if you know me, I am not a huge purple fan. I don't mind it so much, but I, don't, I won't wear it. I do like, like lilac purple is my like one exception. But I had um, spun up some yarn and it was a little too purple for me. I knew I wasn't going to use it. And so I gifted her some hand spun. But of course, she had gifts for me. So she had the previous week, I think, gone to YarnCon in um, Chicago. Okay. And uh, got me, got some yarn gave me and then she had some other things so first of all she bought these at arkansas yarn co online this was from the good noodle company trunk show and this was a mystery bag she had got and she had been wanting minis for i think she's doing a blanket and these minis were weren't quite what she had in mind and so she gifted them to me which i love them because they're super bright 
So that was the first thing. Then the other thing, and I think she's had this for a while, which was funny because I picked up this exact item at Unraveled. And they're like, oh, I really like that, but no, I'm not going to buy it. And then Christy gifted me one. So this is a um, Della Q Maker Buddy Case, I think it's called. I looked up the name. Um, so it's a little case for your notions. And this is magnetic. So you can see all those like sticking up there. And it's big. And with the button, it's super secure. And then she gifted me some yarn. And this is a dyer she uh, discovered at YarnCon, which I had never heard of either. It's called Supernova Dye Works. So she's given me two skeins of yarn here. Um, this one, the color is called Vibe Check. It's 75 Merino, 20 Nylon, 5 Stellina. So that one does have sparkle in it. I don't know if it's coming through though. And then this one is called Swamp Mos Monster in Like, I think. Uh, this is 80% Merino, 10% Cashmere, and 10% Nylon. So I have no clue what these are going to be. They could go together in a shawl because it has the similar colors in it. But we'll see. Um, so yeah, that is what my friend had gifted me. So then the next stop was the alpaca farm. So there is an alpaca farm outside of the town I grew up in. And I love it. I have its own video on Irish Meadows alpaca farm. And I was not going to go this time. Because last time I was there, I went and bought a bunch of um, fiber to spin. And I didn't need any more. But um, a few days before I was leaving, she had posted on Facebook um, saying, Hey, I'm having a one-day sale. And it's Saturday. And I'm like, that's the day I come into town. Great. So before I even went to my grandma's house, I went straight to the alpaca farm. So their sale was, um, they have lots of different items. They even have clothing and socks that are, you know, from other companies, but their whole thing is they stick with the alpaca. Like there's alpaca in all of the things that you buy. And then of course she sells um, both fiber and yarn from her alpacas. So all of the um, fiber and alpaca Things were buy two, get one free. So I tried to be good and I got the smallest vats of fiber I could find because I don't need a lot, but I have never gotten the more like neutral whitish cream. Uh, I've gotten brown before and that last time I got gray, which I still haven't spun. So this is more white cream-ish. That's probably that more accurate. So I got two of these and then I don't use bulky yarn a lot, but I saw this big bulky alpaca and I thought, you know, a cowl or something. And you can see the bits of hay and stuff in here. Oh my gosh, this is it's hard on a podcast when people say how soft something is because you're like, yeah, you, you say that with everything. <coughs> I'm pretty sure this is the softest thing I've ever touched for yarn. This is the softest. It is amazing. So I think it has to be a cowl because I want it like close to my face, but it is stunning. So I bought two things of fiber and a skein of yarn. All right, now I'm going to start putting these back in this bag. Oh, because we're not done. All right, so then um, I went to Midwest Fiber Festival. And before I went to there, um, I knew my friend Sarah, who is the sexy knitter, was going to be vending there. And she brought me something I had previously ordered from Another friend, Christine, treasure goddess, they live in the same town. Christine wasn't able to come, <coughs> excuse me, 
But Christine had had a really, really cool event. Um, I think the weekend before. And I was so jealous. I wish I could have came. And <coughs> um, I asked her that the items she was selling for the event I could purchase. So she had, and I can't remember what she called it. I'm sorry, Christine. I think it was like a yarn tasting something. So she basically had an event at a local winery. And she sold tickets for it. And it included these items I'm about to show. So you got like a, a glass of wine at the winery. And then you got this stuff from Christine. So came in this cute box. That is her logo. And I just think this is adorable. So it came with a little wine glass and a little thing of yarn in it. So you can see her yarn on there. And it came with this. And like this one, in the box, it has the wine yarn name. So it is a nine ounce glass, says on the bottom. And so this one is Cabernet Me Away, Song of the Sirens. It's Treasured Yak Toes Sock Yarn Mini. It is a 20 gram, 85 yards, 70% merino, 20% nylon, and 10% yak. So this is the sock yarn that I love, that I recently made um, socks out of. And she had all these different wine colors. So I bought one for me and then one for my friend Lori, who is a wine lover. And then Christine also graciously gave me one of each color of the other wines. There's a fourth one, which I'm not going to show because it's with the glass that I'm gifting my friend. But yeah, I just thought this was the coolest idea. So it also came with Sarah, like I said, they're friends, live in the same town. Sarah, who does a lot of notions, she did these to go with Christine's, which is awesome. So yeah, so I um, purchased them from Christine and then she gave them to Sarah who handed them to me at the Fiber Fest. So I technically didn't buy this at Midwest Fiber Fest. Um, I bought it before, but I picked it up there and I love it. Okay, now the last thing is what I actually got at Midwest Fiber Fest. Um, so first of all, I take my, took my class. I got there Friday, it, the class was one to four, and then they, Technically, the Fiber Fest wasn't till Saturday and Sunday, but they had an early event Friday night from five to seven that if you took a class anytime during the weekend, you could come for the Friday night shopping, which was, <coughs> excuse me, what I was banking on because we were going to travel home Saturday morning. I was just going to be there Friday. So um, I really wasn't planning on like anything in mind for purchasing or whatever. There was a few booths that I knew I wanted to get to. Of course, my friend Sarah's booth, and I wanted to see Homestead Fibers, who is from Arkansas. Um, and then I wanted to go to the Yarn Adventure Truck, again, based out of Arkansas, and I've never met. Um, so, and I purchased things from all those people. So, the first thing I saw, and this is the star of the show. So, uh, the person who I took the class from, um, let's see, I don't think I have, I think it's Fold Out Cat. Yeah, the Fold Out Cat. So she was, um, she obviously did the class on weaving. She had a bunch of fiber. She had yarn. She also had blending boards, which... I have been thinking about purchasing for a while because I love a drum carter where you basically put your fiber in and make your own bats or roll eggs or whatever, but that's way too much space, way out of my price range. I ended up buying a blending board on Amazon. It's actually coming today. Um, just because I wanted a cheaper thing just to play with it to see what I felt. But anyway, 
I saw this fiber and I ran for it because look at this. It is stunning. Oh my gosh. So there was only two braids of it and I took them both because these are my colors. I love this bright. And then with the oranges and yellows, and I can even deal with that purple. But man, is it stunning. It is stunning. And then when I'm holding it, making sure it's, it's mine, they were telling me that you can, um, it glows under black light. Are you kidding me? So I was extra sold by then. I mean, if I would have only came out with this purchase, I would have been thrilled out my mind. This is gorgeous and I want to spend this immediately. I can't even. So I bought that from uh, the Foldout Cat. And then who else did I see? Okay, so then the next purchase I made, <clears throat> I went to the Yarn Adventure Truck. And <coughs> I really had been trying to be conscious of the yarn. I know as I'm showing all this stuff off. But I try to think, what is my purpose with it? Um, so I didn't buy any yarn at the Yarn Adventure truck. But I found these cute gift tags. I used the good yarn. And then it has like fiber information on the back. So if you gift it, they know how to wash it. And then I bought some really cute washi tape from Shelly Can. And then... I got, of course, some of their stickers, a magnet, and a pin from them. Okay, that's all I got from them. And then I went to my friend Sarah's shop, who is the sexy knitter. Um, she is known for her little notion tins, her cute little triangle bags. And um, all her little bags with stitch markers and stuff. I saw this and I knew my friend Lori had to have it. I mean, if anything screams Lori, if you know Lori, you'll see this and you'll be like, yep, that's totally her. So I had to buy this for her because really. And Sarah also has ton, like a whole box of cute stickers and they're super cheap. So I just bought some stickers, uh, mainly all alpacas with a taco, with a heart balloon, with a friend, and just random, a Golden Girls one. So yeah, that's all I got from Sarah. <clears throat> I really feel like I didn't do bad. <coughs> The last thing I bought was one skein of yarn and it was Homestead Fibers because I really wanted to support her shop. Uh, she is on the Arkansas Yarn Crawl this year. She has her own shop where she just carries her own yarn. She had beautiful minis, which I've been eyeing online forever, but I just didn't know what I was going to do with them and hold that thought for a minute when you see what's after this. This is the last thing I bought. Um, I bought one skein of this. This is, um, let's see, just so it says sock weight. The colorway is Paul. Um, it's 80% merino and 20% nylon, 400 yards. I'm thinking this will be for a textured sock is what I was thinking for this. It's kind of blowing out, but that's, that's accurate. It's a very bright, like mint. <clears throat> so, like I said, that's the last of what I bought. So I pretty much bought these fibers. I bought a gift for my friend, some little stickers and stuff, and a skein of yarn. So I don't think that's bad. Um, but there was two things I really wanted to buy that I stopped myself. Um, one was the blending board, which was $150 from the fold-out cat. She had a pretty good size board. I didn't see how what the measurements were um, and it came with the comb and the dowels so that you can make your own Rolex from it and 
I just wasn't prepared to spend that much for that. I bought a small one on Amazon for 37, which includes the brush and the dowels just to kind of play with it. I figure if I start liking that, then I'll get a bigger size one like that. Um, but just to get me started, because I felt like if I bought that, I wasn't going to do this other shopping. And um, so, yeah. And then the other thing I saw, which I had mentioned to my friend, Christy, I was like, oh my goodness. I saw these minis and I'm like, those are amazing. Oh, I want those. Like, I don't even know what they'd be. I'm thinking like almost a shawl design because now that I have shawl design like in my brain, I'm thinking it needs to be a shawl design because they're stunning, but I don't know. And I'm just, and she's like, oh, get it. And I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it. I don't need it. I, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm happy with what I got. Like I said, if I walked away with just this, I was thrilled out my mind. So we're finishing up shopping and she's like, oh, I just got to wait for one more stop. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going outside because it was, it was a little bit warm in the building. So her one more stop was she bought me the minis that I was eyeing. So here they are. Oh my gosh. You know, I am a sucker for the neons. Oh my God, they're so pretty. Yeah, so this is what, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve minis. Uh, 12 minis. They're each 20 grams. They're 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. Um, it's 1,044 yards in total. And again, these glow in the dark under black light. So, I mean, they are amazing. And I can't believe Christy bought that. Oh, speaking of, there was one other thing I got, did not buy, but got um, the bags that we got, you know, just the cheapy bags they give you. Um, they said to check your bags when you got them because some had winner tickets in there for door prizes. And I got a winner and I went right at five o'clock when you were able to turn it in. And I got a black pearl magic bag. Now it's not one of the see-through glittery. It's like a regular kind of canvas project bag. Really nice. Um, to me, it was like the best door prize, honestly, but it was like purple fabric. So it wasn't my jam. It was a real pretty bag. Um, and Christy was like, oh, I love that bag so much. And of course, I like project bags, but I didn't love it the way she loved it. And when she bought me this, I'm like, um, you know, you got to take that project bag because she's like, are you sure? I'm like, I didn't buy it to trade you. I'm like, um, you're taking it because there's, there's just no way. So I ended up giving her the project bag that I won as a door prize. So yeah, that is it. That was a lot. Um, I thought about not po podcasting today because I feel like I didn't make very much, but I'm like, I can't have all this, um, acquisitions just sitting here for another week because it was just way too much. And here we are like 50 minutes anyway. So obviously there was enough. Um, so yeah, it's been a stressful week. I've been sick, my grandma's health, uh, but there's lots of beautiful things to make. So again, hoping I feel better and I can start making and playing and creating and all the things. So, um, I think, oh, we have one more thing to talk about. It's the essentially going to be the first podcast of the month for May. We're counting it. So briefly talk over my goals. Um, my April goals, I had finished my Thunder Road, which was my bright yellow cotton bolero. Um, that was the last podcast. I was assuming I was going to get done before I went to Iowa. I got sick. Didn't happen. I didn't touch it. Didn't take it with me because I knew it was going to get finished. So that is going to be a goal for this month switched over. The other thing was to start and finish my outline tank. Obviously I've started it. I've been working on it. Obviously didn't finish it. So again, that just is getting pushed to May. Um, the other two goals that were for April were to do a gauge swatch for my Mount Pelier top. I did that. And to finish my Amber Dextra socks, which I did that. Um, so besides finishing those other two things for May, 
other thing I need to do is catch up on my Chevron Fade Blanket. That is my blanket. I'm using my Arkansas Yarn Co. Sock Yarn Society boxes. Um, I'm crocheting bits of them each month. I have not even touched my April yarn. The good thing is that is so fast, I can do that in one sitting. Um, usually I do one setting, the crochet part, and then another setting I do the edging around it and attach it to the blanket. Um, so I'm about to film with Lori this week, but I have not even touched the April one, and I'm okay with that. Um, but I'm hoping to do the April and the May one, because I usually get my box a couple days before they go out, because we try to film early. But this month, because I was out of town and she's out of town, I'm going to basically get it when everyone else gets their box. So we're going to be filming a little late. So I'm hoping to finish the April one and then I'll get the May one or, and I'll hope to finish that one also. So that is my goals, uh, where I'm at. Um, but thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you for watching. Sorry about the coughing and all that stuff. Um, Please like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I appreciate everyone. I love when you comment below like what you're working on. Um, I love to know what anyone else is making. Also join the Ravelry group if you are on Ravelry. And like I said, I'll put all the notes below and the chapters so you can skip around. So thank you for being here. I will see you in another two weeks. Bye.